the news and there's trouble everywhere Gotta reach out, show somebody that you care It ain't good to let the bad news get us down Let's spread some love around Baby, if you wanna go there To a place above the clouds Gotta feel the power of love Baby, we can rise above it If we leave our doubts behind I was a DJ before. I played um, actually really heavy techno records. Uh, that was the thing that was going on uh, when I was 15, 16 years old. It was really big in Belgium as well. Uh, I mean, you have I Love Techno still being one of the most legendary festivals originating from that era, uh, still, still going on. So techno was a big thing in Belgium. And um, so before I started making music, I was a DJ. And um, because I couldn't quite find the records I wanted myself, I wanted to start making stuff, you know, being real, um, uh, really intuitive about it. And, and really, uh, I didn't have a clue of, of what it meant. So, you know, uh, I thought I was going to make my first hit in three months. And, <laughs> you know, several, several years later, um, I kind of started realizing what it really meant to make music and not just... Uh, uh, have a TB303 and an 808 run in sync like in the techno days, you know. Uh, after that I really started uh, working on my compository skills and, and all the other skills that involve real songwriting. My break was really obvious. I uh, used to be in a band called Villa uh, that still exists, one of the, f one of the forefront uh, acts in the whole new disco scene. We were a trio and we made music together and uh, you know, Fredo and Tang, the two, the, the two other band members, they were more uh, DJs uh, than producers, and I was more producer, so it worked really well together. So it wasn't so, a band in the traditional sense? Yeah, it was more like, you know, uh, a trio of like-minded people. We started actually doing a lot of remixes in the beginning. Uh, if I remember, one of the ones that kind of put us on the map was definitely one we did for Moby. We were working with the manager at the time, and... Um, I think he was promoting us and in some way our music got got past his ears and he said like okay why not let's do these young let's uh, have these young guys do a remix for me and I remember you know he talked about it in, in interviews and uh, he sent our management the mail you know that he really liked the remix and so maybe that wasn't the first commercial success but it really said said to me like hey there's something in 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 this for you, you know, not just a passion and not just a, an urge to make music, but also the possibility to maybe in a long term uh, situation create some kind of uh, income for yourself and and dedicate be being able to dedicate yourself fully to the music. So that was the first, and then Villa evolved pretty quickly. Uh, we got to do remixes uh, remixes for great people um, like. Keen and Moby and Gorillas and you know all, all big bands actually uh, at that time, so um, I think my first break definitely came from being in Villa and and uh, and producing music for that project. And when I was in Villa, I really felt the urge to be able to do my own thing without having to take other people's opinions in account, which can be a really positive thing, but at some points can also hold you back a little bit. So it was trying to find the balance uh, within Villa for that. And next to that, I realized that, you know, I, I had to make some music for myself. And uh, rather than trying to have an idea and make it fit, just go on a musical uh, journey for myself and really try to explore where my boundaries are. I've always been something, someone who's been interested in very... Uh, different kinds of music, a very eclectic uh, listening style. So I think you can find a piece of that in Moonlight Matter, especially the new album I'm working on. So having done all these things with Villa, a lot of record companies and a lot of managers knew me already. And they just knew that I started a new project. So a lot of remixes just kept coming my way. And also because of Steven uh, shopping me around with all the remix I, remixes I had already done. Um, I got some fairly big remixes from the start, and which put me on the map. I mean, I wasn't 
part of the initial first wave of the new disco movement anymore, uh, as I was with Villa. But, um, you know, it, it was obvious what I had to do and, and opportunities kept popping up and I just kept delivering. You know, so that that's a very important thing. Uh, and you know, from doing the remixes came all the gigs. And uh, I used to be with uh, Roman, who used to be at Coda, but then he left. And now I'm, I'm with Decked Out with Alan, and it's going really well. You know, I'm really happy. Uh, we, it's work. It's great working together. And uh, so you know, it's never been like a real stress moment. I mean, if you. If you leave a band, there is always going to be some stress. I mean, it's like taking a risk and everything that involves risks uh, gives gives a little bit of stress or a little bit of anxiety. But, you know, I was confident enough and with Steven and with Alan, uh, the whole thing uh, just came together. So we're in Bruges right now. And um, although I've been born in St. Niklas, which is a village at half an hour from here, uh, my parents moved here from when I was one year and a half. Um, so I basically grew up here. By the time I was 17 or 18, I moved to Ghent, uh, which is a great town for musicians. You have Soul Wax, The Glimmers, uh, all these guys coming from there. Uh, I also lived for a year in Antwerp. Um, but after having uh, checked out all these cities, I realized I was a country boy and I, I wanted to come back to the country. And, you know, if you're out most of the weekends in a big city anyway, it's nice to come back and, and you know, be here and, and relax like this. I moved in this studio almost six years ago. Um, I remember finding it, it was perfect because there's a lot of space here and uh, I have like, uh, like a whole, a whole uh, area I can just use as a studio. So that was perfect. I don't have to interfere with anyone. Uh, I don't have any neighbors that are complaining or stuff like that. So it was the perfect spot for me. And uh, next to that, uh, there is some kind of creative vibe in here. There has always been artists living here, painters, writers, all that stuff. And for some reason, I can like feel it. <laughs> and what, what, what did you have before that? I mean, a really you... small room stacked with synths. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it, it was really small and everything was really piled on, on top of each other. And uh, I really got like a claustrophobic uh, vibe from, from the whole thing. And uh, that's why I was so happy to find this here. Uh, I guess if I ever have to move here, it's going to be hard to go back to a confined space. All, all the first stuff from Villa uh, has been made in this studio. Apart from Villa, I've always had the idea to have a house like I have now with a nice studio where I can really uh, invite people, not just for, hey, let's make music for four hours. No, you know, for the whole experience. Yeah. Uh, if you're a producer and you're working together with other people, the psychology side of the of the whole thing is important as well and uh, ha having people over and being able to uh, receive them here in a nice context give them their privacy to sleep to eat to do everything have nice nature around is really something i've an, an idea i've had for years and uh, i had been developing it before during and after villa already so uh, when we made the villa stuff here uh, some stuff wasn't here yet, but we had more than enough gear to make good music. I mean, I'm the last person that's going to say you need uh, a room full of gear to make good music. I mean, it's, uh, it's the cook, not the kitchen. I mean, for me, it's become an obsession and a, and a passion and, you know, a thing to, to work with analog synths that way. But uh, I think talent is the most important instrument. I'm sure I don't need yeah. it. You know, it's not like a compulsive thing to, to buy gear, you know, it's like, it's more like um, I consider my studio as being a drawer full of paint. And when you have a lot of different colors of paint, you can make an interesting uh, painting, you know, and once in a while I need a new color and then I just do it. I mean, it's different if you don't make money from making music and you can't feed your son or pay your car loan or whatever because you're buying gear, buy, buying gear then it's a problem, you know. For me, it's just an invest. Uh, next to the fact that I love synths, um, they are also tools for me. I mean, I really make music with, with all the stuff. And next to that, they're also a great investment. I mean, you could always, you could almost look at it as it being... Um, 
buying houses or apartments or old cars or you know stuff like that so that's three things that are definitely positive about about the gear and if you can contain yourself a little bit and don't get yourself in trouble for buying too much gear it's okay for me i mean there's always a few more since i want like um the the Rhodes Chroma okay. uh, is a synth I've been wa wanting to buy for a long time. Obviously, there is no Jupiter 8 here. Uh, I'd love to have that one. I'd probably buy a memory Moog one day. Um, but the main thing I'm, I'm going to focus on now is buying a little bit more hardware uh, outboard gear. Um, I want to have like a nice hardware unit to track my stuff through that really colors it in a way I like. Um, maybe a better uh, ADDA convert or something like that. Uh, and then, of course, in an, in an analog studio, there's always something to fix. So, you know, once, uh, once I get everything fixed and I just got a good recording channel and I think I'm pretty much set. Honestly, uh, I don't, it might sound a little braggy, but I've had so much stuff that in the end, it doesn't really give you that kick anymore of having something new and you start realizing that it's all about the music, you know? So after, Full circle. Yeah, after my initial gear craze, uh, I'm now in, in, at the stage where I'm totally into the music and you could probably give me a laptop and, and uh, just a sequencer and I'll make music as well. See it on the news and it's trouble everywhere Gotta reach out, show somebody that you care It ain't good to let the bad news get us down Let's spread some love